The Tower of the Five Piles. We want to build a tower. The tower will be founded on five piles. The only load to consider is the weight of the tower. In this case, this weight is equal to five weight units. The piles are similar, but due to some variations during the diving process and to some heterogeneities in the soil, the load that each pile is supporting is different. For the lack of simplicity, we will say that the load supported by each pile is a discrete variable that ranges between 0 and 5 weight units. The only constraint in this problem is that the total sum of the load supported by each pile is equal to the weight of the tower. The question is, what should the design axial load be? To answer these questions, we need to explore all the solutions. Solutions are represented in this way. So, for example, M3 means the load supported by pile number 3. For example, solution 1, 2, 0, 1, 1 means that piles 1, 4 and 5 are supporting one weight unit each, pile number 2 is supporting two weight loads, and pile number 3 is not supporting any load. Solutions can be classified into subclasses. A subclass is represented in this way, so for example, N3 means the number of piles that is supporting a load of three weight units. So our ex example belongs to this subclass, subclass 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, and it means that there is one pile that is not supporting any load, three piles that are supporting one weight unit each, one pile that is supporting two weight units, and there is no pile supporting three, four, or five weight units. There are some subclasses that are particularly interesting. For example, the optimistic subclass is the subclass 0, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. Because in this subclass, in all the solutions, all the piles are supporting a load of one weight unit. However, there is only one solution belonging to this subclass. The only possible solution is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is called optimistic because the design axial load is one weight unit. In contrast, we have a pessimistic subclass in which a single pile is supporting alone the whole load. In this subclass, we can find five different solutions because we don't know if the pile supporting the whole load is pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, pile number four, or pile number five. Now, we can follow the principle of equal, equal a priori probabilities that states that in the absence of any further information, we cannot suppose that some solutions are more likely than others. If this is true, the pessimistic subclass is five times more likely than the optimistic one, because there are five solutions belonging to the pessimistic subclass, and there is only one solution in the optimistic one. If we continue with this reasoning, we can draw a table with all the solutions to this problem. In this table, we can classify solutions according to subclasses, and we know the design axial load, and we also know the probability. So we can conclude that in the problem of the tower of the five piles, there are 126 solutions, and the most likely subclasses with 24% of the probability each, are those. Now, if we pay attention to the design axial load, we can conclude that in 96% of the solutions, the maximum load is less than or equal to four weight units. So if we uh, design piles to resist a load of five weight units, this is something that only happens in less than 4% of the cases. Now, the tower is replaced by a wall, and the wall is much heavier than the tower, but the number of piles is huge. 
In this case, by using statistical mechanics approaches, it can be demonstrated that when ends, then when the number of piles tends to infinity, the probability of finding a pile at a given level supporting a, a given level of load follows an exponential distribution whose parameter is precisely the average per pile. And finally, the wall is replaced by a dense packing of granular material and the piles are just some control regions where we want to know the average stress, the volumetric average of the stress. In this case, the probability of finding a region at a given level of vertical stress, it follows an exponential distribution whose parameter depends on the uh, weight of the overlying material. If you want to read more about this example, please uh, check out this paper.